Okay, let's talk about this. I disappeared for like probably more than a month from YouTube and Instagram and anywhere on the internet essentially until yesterday. I finally decided to explain to you guys what is happening to me in my life and I don't even know where to start. I still don't even know if I totally want to share this with you guys. But I have been traveling back and forth to San Jose every single day, pretty much. Um, Luis got into an accident that left him in the intensive care unit for now. As of today or yesterday, it's been one month since he's been in the hospital. Um, he's out of the intensive care unit now. He's into the regular salons where they're just doing basic um, care. They're trying to, he still has a lot of specialists coming to him and doing all kinds of work because basically what happened is he was walking and a motorcycle was going way too fast and just right on his body and he hit his head really hard he hit his lungs or like it, the, the hit affected his lungs quite badly and he broke his tib fib so of course in all of this the most concerning part is his head I've received so much information and I don't know what of it is true at this point they've told me that his head was fractured that his brain was swollen his he had like some like a tiny amount of bleeding that was like going to just fix itself um I'm at the point where I hate the hospitals and doctors here because they just do not explain anything clearly well there's been a few a few exceptions <laughs> and um i'm exhausted <laughs> i am so tired <laughs> and i feel like i'm just so frustrated at this point too because everybody's trying to help and that's great i love it and people have just been so incredible during this time but there's just so many pressures as well you know people want me to stay in San Jose and I just don't want to because of course half of my life is upside down right now and the other half I would like to preserve as much as possible I don't want to constantly feel like a guest in somebody's house I don't want to have to figure out how I'm gonna be living with Ollie in a different place I just want to be at home sleeping in my own bed using my own bathroom and things like that right it's 7:45. I need to be on on the bus by 9.45 in Campos and um, I'm probably going to show you all of the videos that I had to be edited after this so yes I'm in a different house I'm in a new place we live in a little town called Naranjito and it's about 15 minutes 20 minutes away from Campos so for me to get from here to Campos is a little bit more complicated now um, I have to call a taxi because the bus doesn't come at the time that I need it to to get to Cape Post at 9.45. If not, I have to leave like an hour earlier and that just doesn't make sense at this point because I need to savor every little bit of time that I have at home. At home. And of course I have to deal with Ollie too, so I'm taking him out for like a really early morning walk and then I have to take him out again right before I leave because I'm gone for almost 12 to 13 hours. It's a long day, and uh, like I said, I've been doing this almost every day. Yesterday, I finally took a break. I didn't have any shoots. I didn't have to do anything. I just stayed home. I made some food. I cooked some meals like that I can continuously eat throughout the week because I am not eating the way that I would like to be. Um, like right now, I'm actually about to just go, and my breakfast is just going to be protein powder with water. I'll probably have something with it, maybe, but yeah, like I said, I just I have very little appetite these days. I've already like lost two kilos just from stress and lack of 
proper nutrition. Today, it's kind of a bigger day. I have to, well, I'm going to see if I can talk to the doctor because it has been an absolute battle getting communication from these people. Um, right now, Luis is in the Hospital de Trauma, a tra trauma hospital by the Institute of the National something something. It's kind of like the insurance policy company um, that most businesses work with for um, workers comp and stuff like that. So that was a fight just getting Luis into that hospital even though his company where he works has like the best of the best policy and insurance so whatever not sure why they they clearly just do not want to cover people when it when they don't have to you know and um yeah so that was like three days of fighting before that he was in the hosp hospital mexico which is the mexico hospital and that's paid by the caja and that was a bit of a nightmare on its own um Luis was intubated, in, intubated, or well, tubed, <laughs> to breathe, and on the final day, they started taking down the sedation that he was on, and I went to go check on him, and they told me that they had taken it out. Later, I find out that he ripped it out himself. So clearly, there's something a little bit wrong there with um, care, <laughs> but. Oh, and transparency, obviously. So yeah, he's in a much better place now. It's considered to be one of the better hospitals of the country, and um, I'm still finding things that I don't love about it, but I have to trust in the system because I have no other choice. And I have no idea when Luis should be coming home. Um, he has certain issues with his like movement. He, he's not moving his arms as much as he should because he does have some neuron damage in his brain so i really i'm i'm preparing myself for the worst but i'm hoping that that's not going to be the case but i'm at the point where i really just don't know what to expect anymore um like i said i have no idea when he's coming home and today i'm hoping to be able to talk to the doctor and get a little bit more of a agenda of what's happening and what they're doing and um yeah i I'm lost at this point, I'm so lost, and... Uh, anyways, I have to get ready. I'm gonna bring you guys along as much as I can today to kind of show you what's going on in my life right now. Obviously, once I'm in the hospital, I can't film and stuff like that, but um, I can show you before and after, and my little... my daily travels to San Jose and back. <laughs> I find the bus is... Well, the, the bus going there right now is a pain in the butt because going at 9.45, it's almost always full. Sometimes there's air conditioning, sometimes there's not. It's just much more uncomfortable and there's always traffic, always. So we don't end up getting to San Jose until about 1.32 p.m. And then I have to rush off to the hospital to be there for three, if not four, because there's like an army of senoras who just like want to fight for that spot in the lineup, which makes no sense at the end of the day because we're all just gonna get in at the same time anyways, and it depends on the velocity of your legs. <laughs> it's a whole nother thing. Um, but yeah, anyways, let's get ready and uh, let's get on our way. Yeah. Oh, and just to finish the point I was making about the bus, usually that's my way of clearing my mind and just listening to music and relaxing. But the bus to San Jose is not that anymore. It's usually just when I'm coming home. <laughs> but I'm not gonna be home until like 9 p.m. This has kind of like been my past week scenario. Before that, when he was in the ICU, I was able to stay for three hours and they gave me three different time slots that I was able to choose from. Um, you know, like from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. or 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Um, so that was a lot more easygoing, but obviously that's because he was in a more critical condition. And now that he's not in a critical condition, um, they've lowered it down to 50 minutes, and it's like you have to go at the specific visiting period that everybody is allowed to go to. So, yeah, it's really fun. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to stop babbling now because it's been like 10 minutes, and I will see you guys on the road to Quepos to get to the bus.
restaurant. I just need the bathroom. That's a first. Sometimes at the stop they have the immigration police. And I just got to say that I have my residency in Tramite. So yeah, we're gonna stay here for like 15 minutes and then continue the road. And there's no air conditioning in the bus today. a second ago but I got the expedient expedient thing I don't know what that is in English it's like a report of everything they do to him um, usually the security lets us wait inside but not today today we got a tan it's pretty hot but it is what like 2 p.m. so I've got to wait like half an hour here and then they'll let me enter to go see him Finally, the bus was fast today. It didn't have, we didn't have barely any traffic, so that was great. But um, yeah, I gotta wait for a while now. Okay guys, so I did not finish that vlog. Uh, this is like, what, maybe a week or two in the future? I realized I was not mentally stable enough to be making that video and uh, I just, the, the meeting I ended up having with the doctor was actually extremely discouraging and traumatizing in a way because, well, one, I didn't know that doctors generally I mean, okay, maybe this is a very general statement and maybe it's not true, but it makes sense to me that the doctor would have told me things in the worst case scenario as opposed to a, the good things because you don't know the result at the end of the day. Nobody knows how someone's brain can recover. And um, she ended up telling me that they'd never take the tracheostomy out. Um, that he would never eat again, never be a functional person. And here we are, fast forward two weeks later. And they've given me some amazing news. <laughs> he has had the tracheostomy taken out, um, decannulated, I think the word is. Uh, what? I think it's been about two weeks now. Like, literally the day after the doctor told me that they were never going to take it out, they took it out. And he's talking, he's talking a lot, he's being very Louise. He's really coming back. He's starting to eat purees. Uh, the other day I gave him some sips of water, which was just incredible. And we had a meeting yesterday and he will be, well, he's planned to come home in a week and a half. And I cannot, I cannot explain my joy to you guys. This has just been an absolute nightmare. And you know, even just the stress of having to travel so much, I think this has been something that's really eating at me at the end of the day, even though I feel like it's not. But like, I think just having him here is gonna be such a relief in the sense of where, of course, it's gonna be a lot more work. He has to, we have to rent out a medical bed. Um, we have to get like a, res uh, a recipe for the correct bed it's basically like a pharmaceutical uh prescription that's what it is <laughs> and um we have to you know follow lots of different procedures and do lots of activities in in the house and basically we're just gonna be trapped here for a long time so you're gonna probably see a lot of vlogs in the house for the next little while um but yeah, just the fact that he's going to be here and I'm not going to be having to travel is going to be like a whole nother world because I'm spending like 12 hours or more per day traveling, visiting, doing doctor stuff, doing stressful things by myself, putting myself into kind of like tricky situations where I have to now look for an Uber in downtown San Jose and it's like, you know, 
these are stressful things for me. I'm not someone who likes to be out and about by myself and, you know, I'm really putting myself out there. So knowing that we're going to be in the comfort of my house, even though the doctors are like, it's so much work, you have to be so diligent and like on top of things and you're going to need help and you're going to need so much help. I'm just like, if I've been able to cope through all this and still do all my housework, I think I'll be fine. I mean, I'm not going to say no to help if it comes to the point where I need it, but like, man, I am so relieved. <sighs> yeah, I haven't told anyone really about this, uh, about Louise coming home yet, because I'm kind of trying to wait on telling the family because I don't have a firm date yet. So, you know, I'm in a very tricky situation because there's a lot of people putting pressures on me and, you know, asking me questions every day and needing, needing and needing and needing information. And uh, a lot of the time it's information that I can't give, I don't have, or I'm not mentally stable enough to start having a conversation about these things. And, um, yeah. So as soon as I have an actual date, I'll start telling people more about it but we're still very early on in the process. And this week is gonna be all about appointments at the hospital and learning how to take care of Luis. Yeah, it's gonna to be tough, but in a way, I think it's gonna be much, 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 much easier to be doing everything from home. And uh, yeah. Anyways, I just wanted to pop in and tell you guys that. Aside from that, the rest of that video that I really need to show you guys was nothing too interesting. It's just me like hopping on the bus and going home. So I'm going to leave it at that. And that's my little update for you guys. And um, I'm going to keep you guys posted. I, I don't know the future. I really don't. And things have gone really well. So I hope they continue this way. And uh, yeah. I hope you guys are all well and let's do this <laughs> let's live life <laughs> if I don't answer any messages for a while please don't blame me or you know I'm not uh, I'm not very present online as I said earlier in this video it's well I think it's pretty understandable <laughs> but yeah I'm happy things are going really well so yeah that's all that matters at this point and uh, I will see you guys soon, hopefully. Uh, I don't know what to expect, so I can't tell you what to expect either. So I'll see you guys around. Ciao.